Hello everyone and welcome to your 76th Coco programming tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be talking about how we can customize our mouse cursor using NS Cursor and NS View APIs. So uh, to get started we have a pretty simple setup here so far. I've gone ahead and added two buttons and there's a special subclass of NS View that simply draws a circle when you click down in various locations. It's not too special, and I'm just going to go ahead and show you kind of what that looks like here. So we've got this view, and I can click down, and it draws little red circles. These buttons don't do anything at the moment. All right, so with that said, the first thing that I'm going to try to do is change my cursor to look like a custom image that I have for this view. So basically, whenever I'm over top of this view, I'm going to change my cursor to this custom image. And I've gone ahead and added this little tree type cursor image in uh, my assets folder and you can really pick whatever image you want that you think would work well for a cursor icon and once you've done that um, you can kind of follow along so once you have your image we're going to go into a uh, custom view and feel free to not have this other code if you don't want you can just make a custom nsview subclass and make sure you add that to your nib file so what we're going to do is we're going to implement reset cursor rex and what we're going to do in reset cursor rex, which is basically call whenever it needs to reset how the cursor rectangle is going to be uh, represented, we can simply add a cursor. So we can add a cursor rect and we just specify the rectangle in this view in which this particular cursor should appear. And so this in our case is just anywhere within the bounds of this view, but you could specify something specific within the view. And then we just need a cursor. So the cursor I'm going to create here. And to do this, we create an instance of NS cursor. And there's this initializer that takes an image. So I'm going to pass in my image named, uh, in this case, it's named tree. And then for the hotspot, um, I'm actually going to just leave this as a zero point for now. We're going to come back to that in just a bit to demonstrate what that means. So anyway, I made my cursor, I give it an image, I add a cursor rect on the bounds of this view, and let's go ahead and run to see what we get. So as you can see, when I hover over top of this view, my cursor changes from the standard cursor to my custom cursor that we see there. So we can see when I, when I hover over this uh, view, the cursor kind of changes to be in this weird location that I don't really want it to be, right? And that's because the hotspot for this believes that the uh, point that would be sort of the point of, uh, you know, it, basically every cursor has an actual point that is representing where you're clicking. So we have to tell it exactly on this image where we expect that point to be. And I expect this point for this particular tree image to be centered and at the top. Now, uh, to do that, we're going to change our point to be NS point. And we're going to go down to X and Y here. And basically, the cursor points are represented in the top left being the 0, 0 coordinate space. So in this case, I want my Y coordinate to be 0, meaning the top. And then my X coordinate, uh, I need it to be halfway across. So in this case, my image is. Uh, 12 um, points long, and then I don't really have an exact image that uh, is going to give me great results, but 6 is about in the middle of where my image is. And so we can see now when I hover over this, it's going to put the, the actual hotspot of the cursor right inside the, the bounds of that view, which is basically what I want. So now when I click, we can see that the hotspot is actually going to give me uh, a point in the right location. And without it, it's going to give me a circle that's going to be to the left of this, the actual center point of this cursor. All right, so with that, uh, let's go ahead and quit out of this. So that's how we can override uh, our reset cursor rex here in an NS view to specify where we want a particular cursor to appear if we're over top of a particular view. So the other things I'm going to show you are how you can change the cursor manually uh, outside of an NS view instance. So the first thing that I want to do is just hiding a cursor. And hiding a cursor is pretty simple. You just say nscursor.hide. And then I'm just going to make a timer here, which you know you don't have to do in your case if you don't want. But I just want the cursor to reappear. So basically, I'm going to say uh, reappear after three seconds. And 
uh, I want in three seconds to say NS cursor uh, unhide and that will unhide my cursor. So if I click on hide now, we can see that the cursor goes away and then in three seconds it comes back, right? So if I click hide, the cursor goes away and whenever it unhides, it's back to where it is. Now, the thing about hiding your cursor is that it doesn't actually remove the cursor itself. So, uh, you know, I can hide it and still click in various locations and you can see it's still an active cursor. It just means that it's not visible. And the last thing I want to show is for changing cursors using push and pop. So there's also the ability just to say cursor set, and you can just set whatever cursor you want. But you can also build up a stack of sort of cursors, so to speak, and I'm going to show how we can do that in just a second. So this counter is going to be a counter that goes up to basically 0, 1, 2, 3. And the idea is I'm going to pop on two different cursors, and then I'm going to pop them back off and I'll kind of explain what I mean by popping in just a bit. Um, but for this call, I'm just gonna switch on counter here. So if the counter is zero, I want to put on a particular cursor. And NS cursor has a bunch of default cursors. So if you look in the documentation for it, you can see the different cursor types that it has. One of them is the open hand, and I want to add that on. So basically, if I have if I counter a zero, I'm going to push on NS cursor open hand. If I um, let's do a different case here. So if the case is one, I'm going to go ahead and do the closed hand and push that on. And then if it's anything else, so meaning two or three, I'm going to pop off the whatever cursor is currently active. So I can say nscursor.pop and that will pop uh, whatever cursor is on the top of the stack. And then what I want to do is of course update this counter. So counter, we can say counter plus one and then I'm going to mod four just to make sure that it loops back around from zero through three uh, every time I click. So let's go ahead and try this out here. And what you're going to see is, so the first time I push it, my counter is zero, so I'm going to go to an open hand here. If I click it again, I'm now going to go to a closed hand, and now we're going to pop off the two previous ones. So I'm popping off, uh, basically it's essentially if you think of a stack of things, right? So I have the first uh, item that I put on the stack was my open hand, then I pushed on top of that the closed hand, and now I'm just taking it off the stack. So I'm going to take off the closed hand, which is going to leave me with the, the open hand. And then if I pop it one more, it's going to return to the cursor before that. So we can see there's kind of this four state cursor thing that we can simulate using push and pop. All right. Anyway, that's uh, there's really not much more to NS cursor. Um, there's a few other small APIs in NS cursor, and I think uh, they're pretty self-explanatory if you check out the documentation for that. But yeah, that's pretty much how you can make your own NS cursor and with custom images and hotspots and all a bunch of other fun things. All right. Uh, thanks again for watching the video this week. And thanks again to all the people that support this show, uh, both financially and with your views and likes. And if you uh, like it, please come back next week for another fun tutorial. See you then. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and share it with your friends. Ways to contribute and additional information are in the description. I'll see you next week.